Joining us now is Xiaoming Shi. He's an assistant professor in the Division of Environment and Sustainability at the University at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Well, we know that across China, some cities like Chengdu and Shanghai are conserving energy, keeping the lights off. Is it working? And what else is China doing to address the effects of the heat wave? Um, I think for the heat wave, the government has, uh, as you said, the government has tried to uh, manage the what uh, electricity use by uh, uh, shutting down the some of the factories and to control the use by the industrial sector to uh, make sure that the uh, general public have enough electricity for their use. Um, they are, yeah, they are doing their uh, efforts to uh, help everyone can keep keep their healthy and uh, healthy life. Speaking of healthy, how are people there coping? Is the extreme weather impacting the way Chinese view climate change? Uh, I think local people, uh, uh, local people um, imagine their um, uh, the heat wave by uh, by their uh, air conditioning and also I think some fact uh, some people also have a high a high temperature leave so that don't they don't have to work uh, during these hot days. Technically, China still is in flood season right now. Some regions did experience some heavy rains earlier in the summer. Where do things stand right now in terms of flood season? Uh, I think in terms of the flood season for the precipitation in May, it was record breaking actually in South China and the Southeast China coast. And uh, for uh, for August now, of course, we have the drought, so it's uh, uh, not flooding is not a problem. But the earlier precipitation is record breaking, and it's likely, uh, I would say, it's likely a highly, highly likely a result of global warming because we the level of precipitation was unseen before for me and, and June. We know it's not just China. Much of the world is experiencing extreme weather right now. What more needs to be done to combat global warming? And what are you forecasting for the fall and the winter? Will China see more extreme weather in the months ahead? Uh, for the uh, coming fall and winter, it's a little bit hard to predict. Technically, uh, uh, weather scientists uh, are not really confident to predict the weather for such a long time, like half a year. Uh, but in the, but in terms of extreme weather, I guess what we can say is that in the coming decades, we will definitely have more frequent extreme weather because of global warming. So we will see them more often, and then when that when they happen their intensity will be record-breaking. Mm. Right. Yeah, and uh, I think another question is about how the uh, different countries of China should uh, combat with the global warming. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah I think uh, uh, for combating uh, global warming, uh, a lot of countries are making their efforts. Uh, I think the news just mentioned the uh, development of electric cars and the renewable sector in Germany. In China, uh, the government has already put a lot of effort into carbon neutral neutrality. They are trying to, uh, they are also having a lot of policy and subsidies to uh, promote the development of electric cars. They invested a lot on renewable energy, such as wind and the power, wind power and solar power and hydro. And they are also doing research projects to study how to um, store the renewable energy. Because we know that one problem for renewable energy is its intermittency. So you sometimes you have no wind or solar power. So you need some facility to store that energy so that we can use uh, when they are not available. All right, Professor uh, Xiaomi, uh, sure. thank you so much for joining us from Hong Kong. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Coming up, China.